What's up everyone? This is Gizmo, this is Gremlins Paradise, and today we're going to do a flight. An ILS flight to be exactly. We're going to fly from Amsterdam uh, Skip Hall to Rotterdam Airport and we're going to fly in ILS approach and landing. ILS means uh, landing uh, in instrument landing system. An instrument landing system we use so the aircraft will line up with the runway exactly as it should be and um, when we are close we're going to uh, adjust some uh, settings to my instruments so uh, when we uh, enter the localizer and we are close to the glide slope that the airplane will uh, catch the glide slope and will descend to the runway itself and will make actually basically the landing itself um, in this tutorial I'm going to do uh, let my instruments uh, do the whole landing uh, normally you uh, disengage uh, the autopilot uh, just uh, 200 feet above the runway so you take over it so you can pitch the nose a little bit up because if you um, use uh, your ILS system to land it, it is possible but the landing will be, will be a little bit rough but for this tutorial I'm going to not disengage the autopilot I will just land my airplane on the ground uh, on its own instrument so I won't do anything than just uh, setting some uh, settings uh, into my system and nothing more so that's what we're going to do um, I'm already standing on the runway so I did my taxiing and everything so I'm now going to the cockpit and uh, I'll let you see my instruments explain a little bit and then we take off so now we hit the F10 button. If you hit the F10 button, you get the cockpit view. So we hit F10, and then you see here the cockpits. Um, first of all, this is my GPS. If you click this button here, this uh, satellite button, you get your GPS. A quick explain about GPS. GPS uh, in this flight. We are uh, only using GPS for uh, like frequency information, um, approach information, and uh, visual information. We are not going to use the GPS to fly with, because we have. You can see here we have a little button here. It says navigation and GPS, and we have set it to navigation because we're not going to fly GPS. If we are going to switch this to GPS and we are going to set the autopilot on what is this button here this is the autopilot always check this one on if you don't do that then all these buttons won't work so autopilot and if you want to fly GPS you click this on GPS autopilot on and then you set the approach button on what you will see is the aircraft this is your aircraft and you are pointing with your nose that way so you point pointing north and this is your course, the, the line you see here. So if you activate approach and your uh, GPS, then your uh, aircraft will line up with your course you need to fly and will stay on that. So, but we keep it on navigation because this is a very short flight, as you can see, 25 nautical miles. We're just going uh, a few minutes in the air and then land again. Um, Later in the game, if we are flying, uh, we will uh, get uh, information for landing on the runway. It will uh, today. It will be uh, uh, runway two four, and it will be an ILS approach on the vector. So, on the moment we hear that, we're going to select approach, click enter. We set ILS, click enter. We had we are going to vector from vector. So. We click enter again and then we load but we will be very short to the runway so we immediately will click on activate but for now I'll only say uh, load and I'm going to zoom out a little bit you can do that with this uh, button and if you zoom out you don't see it quite well so we're going to change the view a little bit you can see here this is my course I need to fly and this is the runway 
but the um, control tower will go, uh, will uh, let me fly runway heading first, turn right to 180, and then going to turn again. So we going this way on the runway. So the green uh, things you see here that that is the glide slope. So if you're going to hit that, then if you set everything correct, your aircraft need to descend to the runway itself. Um, so if you are just loading the approach you see this and when we activate vector to final that is when we almost are of when we are close in the area then you see that um, that this line disappeared and now only this line is activated this is the localizer so you, this is the localizer this is what they tell you also stay um, at this speed and stay at this height until you hit the localizer so that's this is the localizer on the moment we hit the localizer uh, before we hit the localizer we have to line up with the localizer so because if we are hitting the localizer it's not if you are not lined up with the wrong way you have not much time left to line up so if you want to line up of course you have your automa automatic pilot on you have your frequency well I'm saying later your frequency right and then you click on VOR lock. If you do that, you see here lock, and you are uh, and here, here you will see here a diamond, and the diamond will go to the middle. If that is so, then it's correct. You will line up to the localizer. On the moment we hit the localizer, we're setting it an approach. Now the airplane will um, will uh, try to find the glide slope, and as soon as we hit this green glide slope, it will start to descend. So this button will shut up, uh, will disengage so don't disengage your, yourself uh, don't do anything to the autopilot uh, on the flight it, the localizer will do it itself um, I can all, um, we al I already know what kind of uh, landing I'm going to get so I can let you see how I find my frequency the frequency I find is I, I click I click on the big wheel you have here two wheels you have one big and one small wheel I click on the big wheel one to the uh, right one time and on the small wheel left one time then you can see here uh, wait point and then the third screen we will uh, land ILS 24 and we have 18030 as frequency this is my radio and we are going to set 180 Point three in this standby screen from NEF1 then we click on the NEF1 switch in the middle and we enter click this one on if you click on this one you see uh, nothing will happen except this light will go on keep an eye on this light you see a lamp, a lamp is going to shine <coughs> on the moment you're in the area in the moment you are in the area of this airport and you have this switch on then you will hear a Morse code if you hear a Morse code then you can click then you see here ID that means activate the frequency you have here is correct so you can shut uh, you can disengage this but this button because you don't want to hear uh, <coughs> the Morse code every 10 seconds so it's very irritating so um, that is my radio that's a quick view about my uh, GPS so um, now we are going to my instruments um, first of all my radio you need to contact always before you're going line up on the runway and this is your radio this is control tower you can see I already had a lot of information because I already taxied I already uh, line up on the runway I only need to take off so for what we're going to do the first time you're uh, contacting uh, tower control you get the information what you need to do so we are um, we are going to do this together I uh, this still it's all uh, still this is default so we're going to set uh, my autopilot now together first of all they say uh, uh, climb and maintain 4,000 feet so 4,000 feet we need to go 4,000 feet so here is your altitude this is 
if you set this and you have it uh, engaged your airplane will fly to the altitude that is assigned for you to fly and will keep you on that altitude so we are going to click this to four and this is this little button you can uh, change the altitude with so we set this to four thousand so when on as soon as we are in the air I will set my autopilot on and my uh, aircraft will after the airborne climb further to 4000 feet um, they also say to me fly runway heading so this here this screen here is my compass and you can see which way you're flying to my nose is pointing at 003 and that is the heading we need to uh, fly the first minutes uh, when we take off so my heading here you can see is 000 also better known as zero, uh, 360 and that is this purple line here so we need this purple line to line up with the white line so what we are going to do is we are going to click three times on the right side of this button don't be too far at the right because you get uh, then you set your bank angle you don't want to set your bank angle to to less because you can see here nothing will happen here but your bank angle will be uh, smaller so your aircraft will take a can you see it, little white dots your bank angle so your aircraft will basically will not uh, bank as lot as normal and the, the, the turn you're making will take lots and lots longer so keep it on furry so we click here on this right side three times you see here that the purple line lines up with the white line that's good because we now we're flying runway heading if we are going to engage this um, that is correct this is correct what we need is speed we need a speed to uh, to stay in the air because if we engage the autopilot and uh, then my speed will go back if it's standing on zero so we said this uh, it's a short flight so I'll set this to 220 because the flight isn't so far so I don't need to be in a rush never be in a rush you better can uh, do everything slow than having a rush but this won't work this is uh, my speed but this won't work if you don't set this on and it, it's required to set this on by takeoff so we're going to switch this on and that allows us to switch this button on don't do it now because your aircraft will try to do speed I'm standing in the brakes now so I'll show you I click this on and you see my engines will start but we stop this we hit F1 quick to disengage the throttles keep this one on so and uh, we need flaps these are my flaps we need to have flaps 5 for this takeoff so I'm going to hit the F7 button 3 times and that will give us uh, flaps 5 sorry that get, will give us flaps 5 now quick information about this this is my uh, display it will tell us a little bit about the compass it will tell me about the speed it will tell me about the altitude it will tell me about the information if you see GS it will it means you have uh, you captured a glide slope it's it's activated now because I'm standing on the runway with a glide slope but um, this this you need to see when you're going to land and then will this bu button will light up in red uh, when we are going to land you also need uh, your uh, your uh, spoilers to set on armed I said armed, not up. Okay, it's not reacting. Okay, now it's okay again. So, you need to set this on armed, and then this button will also appear. Well, okay. <clears throat> Now we have this, now we have that, we are clear to go take off. And what we're going to do is now we are going to request takeoff clearance. So that is what we're going to do now. Paypal Tower, World Travel 2608 Heavy at runway 36 left, ready for takeoff, IFR to put on a down. World Travel 2608 Heavy, clear for takeoff, runway 36 left. 
we get a clearance, always read back. Clear for takeoff, runway 3, six, left, world travel 2, six, zero, eight, heavy. Well, you see now I'm clear to take off, so I can go take off. I will say to you, um, see if every, yeah, I will say to you, um, have a good flight, have a good learning, and I hope you enjoy the music and this video. Um, if you want to see a, a, a full video for a mission and it, that calls Amsterdam London Approach, then you can click at the end of this video somewhere here on a button, and that will give you and that will uh, link you to my other video that I'm making now. And I'm going to make a full um, video without music in it, so you hear everyone talk from Amsterdam to London, and it's a mission. I thought it was an, uh, an advanced mission for ad advanced people, but um, it's actually quite easy. <coughs> Sorry, because you also use uh, ILS. Um, so at the end, click at this one if it's uh, this link if it's standing there, and uh, I will say to you, have a good flight. Okay, now the radio. It's telling us how to take off. Not uh, really useful information, except uh, we need also uh, to uh, engage the outer throttle and the FD, because then we have uh, a cross at our screen, so we can see on which degree we are taking off. We make sure everything is set. The flaps go to five. That's standard default for 737A100 on flight simulator. Make sure the parking brake is loose and we set full thrust. If you uh, spawn your airplane default on the runway like I did now, it will keep going straight. If you drive up the runway, you will need to steer. It will bow to the left. When we hit the speed of 150, we can take off. Make sure you do that on a 5 degree angle for the first 2 or 3 seconds. After that you can go to 10 degrees. When you do that, don't do that, then you're going to make a tail strike. Now we set the autopilot on for the settings that you have been have set before taking off. You retract the gear at first and after that you will retract your flaps also. Don't pay really much attention to the mouse when I'm uh, at uh, the ATC menu because uh, most of the information is just switching channels. Now it was saying that we need to climb to 4000 feet what I was already given by us as order. Alright we are now getting also the stuff for landing the information we need to head, head heading to six five and we need to climb and maintain four thousand feet we are expecting ILS that's what I explained before instrument landing system and uh, yeah I'll let you guys show you uh, I'll, I'll show you guys how you need to do that Now, I'll get runway approach LS24. So, in a moment, I'll set that in the navigation. As you may be noticed on this moment, uh, I'm just sitting back, smoking, and speaking. I'm not actually playing because this was already recorded like months ago. Well, not a the heading is set to 180. We are still almost at 4000. Now, if you hit the program knob button and then select approach, enter, and then you can navigate with those big uh, yeah, buttons, how you call it, turning buttons. You select ILS 24 and then we select the vector. Because we 
have got the vector, so we're going to hit vector, enter, and we load it. Now we can go back, then we uh, we see a little uh, purple, pink, how you want to call it, stripe. That's what actually what we need to follow. Uh, I have my plane this moment on navigation, so it uh, will... Uh, Oh no, I have not a navigation, I have it uh, on uh, the autopilot that I have to correct myself. Oh, we are close to the airfield, so we're going to immediately activate. And then we see the heading that we should fly, or that we're going to fly, is the 180 degrees. And we have like a little, yeah, I would say, 45 degrees turn. Maybe less, maybe a little more, not pretty good at uh, but if you go to uh, this menu and uh, you'll see our LS24 has uh, the frequency of 108.30 so we're going to enter that code in the standby and after the standby we hit the nav switch so this 108.30 and then we hit the nav switch what you can do is, uh, yeah, let me hit the next switch. Go on. Good. good. Now, now you can see it switched. That button there, it's only, uh, then you hear a Morse code. If you hear a Morse code and it is correctly to the runway, then you're hooked up to the signal and you have uh, a free to go for ILS. That's actually the basic thing you need for ILS because ILS is pretty easy to do if you know what you need to do. You just need to have your settings right. You need, you need to know where you need to land, you need to know how to program, program it. This is actually the GPS. Uh, you need to know how to navigate in the GPS to find the code for the nav, switch it from standby to nav, and then the only thing you need to do is activate auto system that we're going to do in a moment. That bar, what I'm just touching right now, that, that, that means if, the, if we are lined up with the runway, yes or no. So that's like... Uh, you can see if you're straight. Now you can see the button is lined up. You don't hear a sound now because I have, uh, yeah, this, this is pre-recorded. So um, you can turn it off. If you hear the mouse code, then you're connected and, <coughs> well, at least your system should work getting the glide slope, the localizer, actually, and the glide slope after that. Uh, for it's just a little bit waiting. You have the checklist. You can look at the checklist. Uh, which settings you need to fly uh, when you're going to land. Normally, I'm flying uh, the. Uh, it's a long time that I've been flying. Um, it's the seven three seven. I forgot from which company it was, but it was like totally advanced, every button works PMDG PMDG now, yeah, your checklist you can go to the checklist and that I just don't need to explain it, it's just that uh, the basics well, if you don't even know what's standing here then it's going to be possibly very hard for you to fly well, we're getting now that we're uh, we need to change heading to two one zero. We need to decrease our altitude with two thousand and maintain two thousand. And then we should get contact with the localizer. So we are going to set the autopilot now. So we're going to two thousand. Um, I recommend to not exceed. Um, vertical speed of 1800. We can set the flaps up to 5. I always begin at 5, especially at uh, this speed, 220. There you can see which speeds you need to have for which flap. So, if you're flying with um, FS passengers, 
uh, this is certainly handy to uh, take a look at because if you are flying over speed then your flaps will damage and it will res uh, result in negative points now we just uh, got contact with the tower well we are activating actually on this moment we are activating the VOR lock and uh, this will uh, lock your system with the, uh, the localizer, so it's a little, a little pink uh, stripe you see at the beginning of the runway, and it will localize our airplane or <coughs> yeah, sorry, our airplane will guide itself to the localizer. Um, as soon as that happens, also the heading will turn off. But that's for just in a moment. So you see now the heading just turned off. I'm not pointing at it, but uh, the heading with the air, uh, automatic pilot just flipped off. That, that means that you're on the localizer. You can see that the aircraft is turning without doing anything on this moment. As soon as your aircraft gonna hit that pink stripe, then the diamonds are probably in the middle. This one will here be here. That means you're straight up with the runway. And we can look. Uh, it's very, very far away. I'll make a little flyby. But yeah, and this is also a good moment, yeah, to uh, retract your gear. If, uh, lower down your gear. Well, you see now that the. Uh, aircraft will in, uh, adjust itself because it flew a little bit too far so it will uh, as you see you can see it will turn the other side around and in a moment we're going to hit the localizer you see here that now we're going to hit the approach button so we're going to change from localizer to approach and that's in the moment we're going to hit the pink stripe because on the moment we hit the pink stripe, the diamond that is vertically standing on the uh, display, it's going down. And when that's in the middle, then we are enter entering the glide slope. It's uh, you need to set your uh, spoilers to arm, and so you have the, the brake sign activated. Your speed need to be 180 for making a begin approach. And your flaps need to go up. Uh, I think. Uh, what should I do? Okay. Now we hit the app, pro, app uh, button because the diamond you see here is dropping. Then we hit the app button. That means that the altitude button will turn off as soon as that diamond is in the middle. If that happens, then you hit the, local, uh, the localizer and the airplane will descend itself. Look, it turned off, and we're descending now in this moment, as you can see. And uh, yeah, we set the flaps further up because we're going to decrease again. So now we're going uh, all the way up to 30. It's full flaps, full throttle. We set auto brakes. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I've, I've said it for, for the sake of this tutorial, I set it on free, but one is good enough. You can even uh, go without. Um, below a glide slope, that means that we have hit the glide slope and that we are lower than the frequency. So that's good. As, as long as we are lower than frequency, the aircraft stays flying on the uh, glide slope and it keeps going down. As soon as you go too high, then you lose the glide slope and you need to take control over your plane so don't make a dive or anything as the soon as you uh, miss the glide slope uh, you're just too high you won't make it to set it down on the ground so don't, just don't try just take some time and go around and the moment that we're like 
100 feet or so. We are going to disengage the autopilot, but please do not forget to disengage the automatic throttle arm button. Because if you don't do that, you're not will be you will not be able to uh, to uh, yeah to break. You will keep you will constantly keep uh, you, you, your your engines will constantly keep going in full speed. So disengage the auto throttle first to be sure. Now we also disengage. Normally we disengage the autopilot, but I'm seeing I'm not doing that on this moment. And I make a very hot landing. But I can remember that why that was. I was talking uh, first of all. Uh, I was making this video also with talking, but I've, later on I did music on it. And I was like stressed out because like a few things were going wrong in the system. I need to fix that pretty quick. Can't explain it what I just did. It takes too long. But uh, yeah, that was a little bit of a rough landing. I'll let it see from sideways in a moment. Hey guys, hey guys, as you can see, we are landed. I already taxied to the parking spot and I'm, I'm ready standing in a parking spot you can see next to me stands a Learjet so he's also parked but okay we made a landing and we made an ILS landing um, um, first of all normally um, I use the ILS uh, from beginning to land uh, in the finals uh, in the final for landing also when I touch down, also when I slow down, I use my OS system. Normally, um, you use, uh, you do a few hundred feet, I'm going to my cockpit first. So, F10 button, cockpit, don't forget that, F10. Uh, this uh, view is F11, but okay. Uh, normally, if you're going to do an ILS landing and uh, you're, uh, you have done uh, you have done uh, your lining up, you are hitting the localizer and you are descending and at the last 100 feet or 200 feet or 300 feet, just what you like um, you disengage the autopilot at this button here you leave approach button on but you disengage the autopilot so it will give you control of the aircraft and you will give it a pitch up uh, a nose and pitch up uh, settings and uh, of, uh, you can pitch up your nose sorry uh, so you will uh, your landing on the runway will a little bit smoother um, and when you're using the ILS your heading will a little bit you take uh, your touchdown will a little bit too rough but that doesn't matter it's it still works and for learning uh, first learning how to use ILS it is easier to keep your ILS settings and autopilot on also with hitting uh, also with the touchdown <laughs> Uh, qu quick explaining, you're flying, uh, you, uh, you keep it on navigation, you follow uh, the heading, what your control tower is giving you. On the moment, on the, on the moment he says, um, air, uh, airport, uh, he, give you, he gives you um, uh, the runway to land on, and you uh, program everything in your settings, what I told you before. Uh, you, uh, you, you, you search for your uh, frequency. You set your frequency in F1, standby, click on the navigation in active, so it will appear in active. Uh, so you will do that, and after that, the control tower will give you the information like um, airport is at, at your 3 o'clock, uh, turn uh, right, heading uh, blah blah blah, uh, descent uh, so many feet, and uh, uh, keep uh, holding that pattern till you're established on the localizer. Um, then you get uh, the activate vector to final. When you hear that, you vect uh, your vectors to final, or you can do it earlier. It's what you like. I do vectors to final, and then you, and the localizer will appear. So you turn to the direction uh, the control tower tells you, or you just click the VOR lock button. Um, 
this is the best way to do it just click the view all lock button because if your settings are correct your airplane will line up with the localizer itself as soon as it hits the look uh, wait wait before uh, make sure always uh, before you hit the localizer speed is 180 or you're going too quick and when you hit the localizer make sure that your speed is set to the uh, the speed you need for uh, the, the the touchdown you can s see that by clicking this V button reference and then search in the list what you're going to do how you're going to land and which aircraft it's it's different and of course this is the Boeing 737 800 I use 40 flaps and then the speed is 162 um, always make sure you have full flaps by pressing F8 it will direct go to full flaps set your auto brakes um, and then your uh, and, and always make sure of course your gear is down when you have done that those settings you're actually almost done um, then you just wait until you hit the uh, localizer then you set your speed back to the landing speed and uh, and you set the VOR lock when you hit this localizer VOR lock to approach and that means that when the aircraft hit the glide slope you can see here also a, uh, a button shine below glide slope that's good because you need to be below it you see a diamond going to the middle here it needs to be in the middle and a diamond here it needs to be in the middle too here th this diamond here that normally appears when you're in the air um, it says uh, if you are lined up with the runway so if it's in the middle you are lined up and as soon that we uh, we call that uh, <coughs> a view are alive and as soon as this diamond starts descending to the middle uh, we call this glide slope alive then you have uh, captured the glide slope or if you have uh, found the glide slope it's going to the middle position here and as soon as that happens this button will turn off itself and you hit the glide slope and you will descend to the runway and then uh, just a few hundred feet above the runway uh, two three hundred feet uh, this is very important guys this is very important make sure this button is switched off so that is in this position it will be in this position but you need to set it in this position in the off position why then otherwise this uh, the speed indicator uh, switch won't disengage so what happens I will turn this down because we don't need it anymore we need this one because when that happens you are not able to control your throttles so you hit the wrong way but you're not able to uh, to lower your speed it, uh, it will stay on the 162 so always make sure these buttons these two buttons are off when you hit the wrong way uh, make sure uh, that this one is unarmed it's not working again for me um, I will find it out later why it's not working but make sure it's unarmed here and you will see a little button of a little light appear here and then it's okay and as soon as you hit the runway then uh, take, your, uh, take your mouse and push back your throttles totally to the bottom until these two thrusts also uh, get to the back like this then you will slow down uh, like you should be um, you can also hit F uh, if you F, hit F4 you can see they're going up and if you hit, hit F1 they are going to idle but you won't get reverse thrust so you click on page down you hold page down and then the reverse thrust will uh, activate also so you can do it manually with your mouse or you hit F1 and then page down all that is it for uh, this tutorial may always uh, uh, by the way uh, your auto brake I had it set to free because I for this tutorial I'm not always uh, in the cockpit to uh, do my instruments and braking because um, I'm also giving you the outside view so I'll set auto brake to free to a high uh, position so it will uh, automatic automatically brake and slower the speed fast 
uh, as soon as it hits the runway. Uh, but you still need to do your throttles uh, and everything, st even if you use this. You can also uh, use this in combination with the period key, this is this one, uh, the dot key. It will also uh, slow your plane down. Um, but uh, so you don't need to uh, really need to do, to do reverse thrust. So you can also use this one. But please don't you don't set this to the max or something. Then use the period key and the uh, reverse thrust because it will uh, it will slow your airplane down so fast. And an airplane uh, in real life is not made for doing that. So it is or you're using this and the period key, or you're doing using this. Um, uh, in a slow position uh, using period key and then the throttles together then it will work so um, um, yeah I explained everything I need to explain um, quick though you can here see the altimeter they always give you uh, if you are going to take off or uh, if you're going to a new radio station or you're going to land you, they give you an altimeter it means um, if you uh, how high the ground is above sea level so if I set the altimeter to a higher level you will see that um, I set it now to a higher level level you will see that I'm standing on the ground so it should be zero 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 but it's now two two almost two two four zero so uh, two four zero sorry so it, it gives you uh, filthy, filthy information about uh, how high you are, and uh, it gives you also filthy information to your automatic pilot. So make sure this is always at zero, 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 zero. Um, for this, this was uh, my tutorial. There was an ILS approach from uh, Amsterdam Schiphol uh, Airport to Rotterdam Airport. Uh, please rate and subscribe because this is my first video. I need to get up also and. Um, Oh yeah, you can see it here. Flying the altimeter is not set correctly. Hit B on your control uh, on your keyboard, and it will set your um, altimeter to uh, the altimeter it should be. So, but uh, please rate and subscribe. I hope to see you to my next video. Um, if you have any su any su suggestions or you want to know something about something else of a flight simulator or you, there is another game you want to discuss um, you can mail me at insightstripemassive at dse.nl or uh, just uh, subscribe or send me a comment and uh, I'll look if I can make a video about that game for you and your questions and if you have uh, any other questions uh, please feel free to uh, ask me I will answer it uh, by mail or in the video uh, if I'm able to. Um, for this, for now, this was uh, Inside Massive, and um, I'll see you uh, to my next video. So please rate and subscribe, and thank you for watching.